Let's take a look at the players who once looked certain for big moves after relegation, only for nothing to come of it, leaving them forced to sit it out in the championship. Steven Taylor. When Steven Taylor was sucked down the wormhole into the championship in 2009, he was one of the few to come out of that season for Newcastle with any morsel of credit. With half the squad having practically signed out of Tyneside with six months of the season left, no doubt having contacted a bunch of real estate agents overseas, the local lad Taylor, well just ignore the fact he was born in Greenwich, looked like the future for the Magpies. But no, the summer of 2009 was an absolute mess for the club. They were getting battered 6-1 by Leighton Orient, Alan Shearer had been sentenced back to the BBC, it was a rudderless ship. Julian Lescott had just swapped Everton for Man City, so the Toffee spent the summer trying to prize Taylor out of Newcastle's very dead and loose grip. Tottenham were also linked with him, he ended up staying, got his face punched in by Andy Carroll, became a hate figure in Sutherland, spent much of his time in the treatment room before being spat out in 2016, this time after another relegation. Charlie Austin. Charlie Austin must have been going out of his mind during the summer of 2015. He just netted 18 goals for QPR the previous season, they'd been relegated and so half the bottom half of the table were desperate to snap him up. This was the season before Euro 2016. He could not afford to be wasting time playing games against Rotherham and Bristol City. So then Leicester had a £12 million bid and then a £15 million bid rejected. Considering they then went and won the league nine months later, I'm pretty sure he felt like jumping off a bridge in May. Newcastle were also interested and he was even challenged by Alan Shearer to beat his Premier League goals tally at St James's Park, which is a bit like daring a small child to pick up a bus with his bare hands. Even the likes of Liverpool and Chelsea were linked to that man, but no, QPR were stubborn and kept him for another six months before flogging him for £4 million in January. Considering they turned down £15 million just a few months earlier, someone should really have taken their chief negotiator outside and put him in a bin. Ben Gibson. Ben Gibson to leave Middlesbrough if club suffers relegation from Premier League. Yep, looks like you got that one wrong lads. Gibson might have wanted to salvage his England career prior to the World Cup, but after going down with Middlesbrough last time out, it never really happened for him. It was probably the fact he just signed a five year contract at the Riverside at the start of the Premier League season that ruined it for him, with nobody bothering to stump up the £30 million or so. Andy Johnson. This one I will just never understand. I'm not sure whether Andy Johnson was just simple or whether his agent was secretly trying to sabotage his career for kicks, but here's the scenario. You've just scored 21 Premier League goals for a club who ended up getting relegated. You've just forced yourself into the England reckoning. There is a World Cup coming up in a year. Why on earth would you then decide to sign a five year contract to Crystal Palace when they've just been chucked back into the championship? Did he really think Sven Joran Eriksson was going to bother to watch him accrue Alexandra away? Like I admire their loyalty in a way, but then not really because he ended up signing for Everton the next summer anyway. After the World Cup. A World Cup he ended up watching on TV. It just didn't make sense. Adam Johnson. Here's another Johnson. This is the bad one. Adam Johnson was always tipped as a bright young talent at Middlesbrough. Even during the 08-09 season when they were struggling, he was getting linked with Real Madrid. He'd probably have been used as wet dish rag by the likes of Ronaldo and Raul at the Bernabeu before moping in a studio apartment trawling the internet for the Spanish age of consent. I have to admit it was very flattering just to have your name mentioned in the same breath is a massive honour. Getting linked to clubs like that is what you dream about. I bet that's not all he dreams about. When the club were actually relegated that season, the rumours became more concrete. Not from Real Madrid, don't be ridiculous. But Chelsea were certainly interested. He didn't go, stuck around the championship for a bit before signing for Man City in February 2010. And then we never heard from him again. Ha, no, we wish. Dean Ashton. Jeez, the lads, these are all English players. Well, Dean Ashton was another hot shot. This was back in the days before Sean Wright Phillips turned him into a salesman at Carphone Warehouse, or whatever he's doing these days to make ends meet. Poor old Dean Ashton. He had a really bright future ahead of him before ironically having his career practically snapped in two in an English training session by the smallest player on the pitch. Who knows what sort of career he'd have had if that had never happened. But anyway, back in the summer of 2005, Andy Johnson wasn't the only relegated striker who made bad decisions. Ashton had just netted seven goals in 16 games from Norwich. It didn't save them, but he was being talked up for the World Cup anyway. A move was not forthcoming though, and he had to stick it out in the Championship for another six months, scoring 11 goals in 30 games before West Ham rescued him in January. A few months later, he was scoring in an FA Cup final. Three months after that, his career was practically over. Kevin Doyle. Here we go, finally someone on this list who isn't British. Anyone who isn't Irish probably won't remember the hype train surrounding Kevin Doyle. My God, it was ridiculous. Looking back at it, yes, he was a decent, hard-working pro, Good player, but in reality he hit double digits in the Premier League once and had to retire because he used to head the ball too much. He was a good player. He wasn't the second coming of Christ with a Wexford accent though. Anyway, the current coach of the Wexford under 20 Gaelic football team, when he fell through the trapdoor with Reading in 2008, after six goals in 36 games, many would have pointed the finger at him and accused him of underperforming. But according to Doyle himself, on transfer deadline day, I remember getting a call actually to go to Spurs. Kevin, we can't get through to your club, they've all turned off their phones. That was Reading's foolproof way to keep their star man. Order everyone to chuck their phones in the bin until 12 o'clock and wait for all this to blow over. Considering Spurs had just sold Berbatov and Robbie Keane that summer, they must have been about as desperate as a 17 year old asking girls on the bus if they'll go to his Debs. Hence why their only solution was Fraser Campbell about 10 minutes before the window shut, which is a bit like going to the dance with your dog. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.